Assalamu alaikum. This is Sheikh Dr. T.A. Bashir from Masjid Alhamdulillah. I'm here with the board from Masjid Alhamdulillah. My guest tonight is Mufti Saeed. And Mufti Saeed wants to discuss some of the things that are missing in Islam, and that's basic knowledge of our Akita, and there will be question and answers afterward. I'm very happy to have the Mufti here to take his valuable time and share his knowledge with the community. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. Take it away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone can even hear me without even a mic. <coughs> I'm going to give the format of today's program. There's going to be a short talk, and there will be a question and answer session. And then I might ask someone to come here and say some few words about the experience. How many rewards are here? How many rewards? How many rewards, rewards over here? Yeah. MashaAllah, all of them. Okay, good, MashaAllah. Uh, I'm going to be talking on the very basic things about Islam. I'm sure you already know that. But still, some things are which is not totally clear. Okay. I'm going to divide like a few things and uh, start from something from very basic and then we will move on. Inshallah, okay. I welcome you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My today's talk is about the knowledge and then the basic fundamentals of Islam, which is our Akida. Akida is something like, you know, there is a building. And if the base of the building is not strong, and you will feel the vibration in the building and sometimes it will collapse and it can anything happen. The fundamentals of our Islam is the main Akidah, which is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So let's talk about the first part, which is La ilaha illallah. Now, if I ask you, uh, explain me about what is, how would you define the word ilah? Who would not answer me that? God. Who are you gonna answer? What is it, explain me. Come here. Come on, say in the mic. <laughs> what is the meaning of Allah? How would you define what Allah means? Mm -hmm. When you say La ilaha illallah, so define me, say some few words about Allah. Uh, when I think of Allah. Say, uh, say in the mic, man. When I think of Allah. No, no, bite you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When I think of Allah, I think of God, but I think of specifically one God. Speak loud, speak um, loud. I'm just talking about, okay, the first part is la ilaha illallah. So what is this word? Ilah means in the first part of the first part. God. Ilah. God. What do you mean by God? Creator. It doesn't, it, it doesn't say Allah. I'm talking about the ilah, the word ilah. And the word la ilaha. So define me the word ilah means. Sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I know la ila la is, is no is negative. There is no God but one Allah, yeah. and then Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger. Yes, right. sir. Okay, go ahead. Take a seat. Yeah. Who's next? Who's gonna answer me that? Yeah. That's the basic things I'm asking about Islam. The basic things. That's even the first part and the first part of the first part. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna answer me that? Nobody knows. Who's going to answer me? What about from the sisters? 
Somebody send me a message from there. Khadija. Come on, anyone and take a, take a guess. Take a guess. Khadija. What about Ilah? What that mean? What does Ilah mean? I'm not talking about Allah. I'm talking about the word Ilah means in Allah, Ilaha. No, come on. Don't look at the Google. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep the Google down. Don't even, don't, don't even trust Google. Okay, nobody wants, nobody wants to answer me. Okay. The word Ilah means it can be anything. Mm. It could be human. It could be a bottle of water. It could be a mic. Like any creation could be ilah. Mm. The ilah means when you love someone, let's say I love this bottle. I love the bottle so much. I'm reaching my extreme. I'm going my extremist. I'm going more ahead more than expected. I love this bottle more than anyone else. So what is this? This is my ilah. This is my ilah. Okay, let's say I have a pet. I have a dog. I have a cat. I'm going to die without my cat. I'm going to die without my dog. I can't live. I love my girlfriend. I love my boyfriend. You're reaching your limit. You're reaching it. That's like you can't even live without it. That's what it ilah means. It could be anything. You obey someone. Like let's say in our back in our countries, like in India, Pakistan. Like these people, they respect their elders. They just follow them. Whatever they say, they have they do it. And they say, no, 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 no. These are they have done like maybe twenty hajj and they have a lot of barka in their hands. They they have the blessings, but they made them ilah. Mm -hmm. So that means they forget about Allah is up there in the heaven. Mm -hmm. So that what it says in the first kalima, La ilaha. Mm -hmm. That says Oh God, so the whole kalama has two meaning. The first thing is that I believe there is only one God. There is only one creator and there is only one sustainer alone by himself. There is no one thing else. Like who is feeding you? It's alone up there in the heaven. A quick question? Yeah, uh, I you have, have to speak uh, loud. I have come here, come here, come here. Uh, the word, <coughs> the word in law in the Semitic language means a God. When we talk about Allah, A-L is a definite article like in the English, it means the. In law means God. In the Hebrew, which also is a Semitic language, they use lo, and they say Elohim. And Elohim could be singular or it could be double. But the word with the O or R starts in the same makhrij as in the throat. So when you say law, when you say law, you're talking about God. There is no God but a law. That's the way we define it, right? All right, thank you very much. There is no God but a law. Yeah, hold on a second. So <laughs> when we say la ilaha illallah, the ill in front of it is talking about there is no God but God. So that's our definition of it. And there are many interpretations in Arabic, and that has to do with the way you can uh, interpret Arabic, because one word in Arabic can be interpreted four times in English. All right, so I'm going to continue. The word Eli, it could be anything. Like the first thing we have to believe, there is no Eli. Like there is no other creator of the universe. And only Allah knows like how many universes are there. And we believe there are many universes. And it says in the first surah and the first chapter and the first verse, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises to one God. And that's like if we try to translate and to understand the first verse. This is something same as a kalima. Like when we say la ilaha illallah, there is only one God. That means we love, we respect, and we obey one creator. And the whole universe is created by one Allah. There's no second creator. That we truly believe 100%. We do not believe there is someone who is partnered with, na'ud billah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only Allah alone by himself. It's no one else. And the second thing, and we have to believe, the first thing we believe, that he's alone creator. And the second definition of that is, we make a promise that I promise to Allah 
that I will obey your commandments. And I will not obey anyone, and I will not respect anyone, I will not follow anyone except your commandment. You are alone that I will follow. And what is that? Our Holy Quran. We have to follow what it says in there. And the second part of the kalama is Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the first definition of that kalama is, we believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. And the second definition of that, we promise, in the first word, we promise to Allah that you are only alone, sustainer. And the second definition is that we promise that we'll, we will follow your commandments only. Now that's the second definition. And the second part of the kalama is Muhammad Rasulullah. The first definition is we believe that the Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger. And the second definition is we promise to Allah that we'll only follow your messenger. We will not follow anyone else. Either it could be a scholar, it could be an imam, it could be mufti, or whoever. Even somebody has a lot of blessings in his hand, we cannot follow him. Because we have to believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if you look in these days, many people have divided themselves. They have restricted themselves to some, like let's say group A, group B, and group three, if you understand why we do not have the unity in our Muslim Ummah. This is the root cause, this is the root cause. But let's say uh, we have four mother. How many of you know that? Brother, who may, how many? Excuse me, brother, who knows that we have four mother, right? Yes. We have, no. you gonna say it? Yes. Hanafi? We have four mothers, right? Yeah. Like, like um, yeah. Imam Abu Hanifa, yeah. Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hanbal, yeah. and Imam Malik. Yeah. May Allah bless them all. Yeah. They were the great scholars. They were the great scholars. Yeah. And they were the best people came on the earth to guide people who were misguided. But none of them told anyone to follow me or restrict yourself to me. They never told that. They say f how people are divided. They restricted themselves. You're listening, you follow me? Yeah. They restricted themselves. Like they, let's say uh, you are brother, he's Hanfi, yeah. he is Shafi. Yeah. He's humbly and he's Maliki, right? Yeah. So we have a four different groups. But what if you just remove your label? Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna go back to Kalima. See, that's a problem. He restricted himself, he restricted himself, he restricted himself, and he restricted himself. Mm -hmm. So what happens? How the shaitan deceived the people, the later generation? Mm -hmm. All the imams, right? Let's say for an example, if I have a, if somebody asks me, can I drink a water in a cup of, in a cup? I said, yes, that's permissible. If somebody comes to me, can I drink a water in jug? I will say yes, that's permissible. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to me, can I have a drink of water in a bowl? It's permissible. Mm -hmm. So cup, we have a glass, we have a bowl, and we have a jug, mm -hmm. okay? So what happened, these were the options, but these were permissible. They did, they, they, okay, you can do that because this is not contradicting Quran, this is not a contradicting Sunnah, this is permissible, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens, not that generation, but the next generation, they came, yeah. and one of the person came was in shaitan. Mm -hmm. He came in the face of a human being to misguide people. And how did he misguide you? He came to this brother. He said, Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah bless him, used to drink a water in cup. Mm -hmm. Now his son, now his son, now his grandchildren, all are using in a cup. But what was the, let, let's go back now. The first thing was to drink, you can, you have the, you are, you are permissible to drink a water in a cup, mm -hmm. in a glass, in a jug, in a bowl, however you want. Mm -hmm. But do not restrict yourself just to stick with the glass. Do not restrict with the cup. Do not stick with that. You understand my point, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because they differ between each other. 
but people later on generation, they restricted themselves. They restricted themselves actually. That's how the people divided. So this is what my mission is to let, uh, tell the Muslim to remove your label and go back. If somebody asks who you are, what madhab you follow, we say we don't follow no madhab. Let's say, let me ask a question. What was the madhab of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What was the madhab? No madhab, he was a Muslim. And if you know, all the prophets came from Adam Alayhi Salaam, after the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had the same madhab to worship one Allah and just follow the commandment, what is halal and what is haram. And do not restrict yourself with the one madhab. <laughs> now we have a problem. If someone has a problem that they need a consultation and they want to ask a question. Your brother listening to me. Now, if somebody has a question, do you have, let's say, you have some matter that you need to ask a scholar. You go to him, you're going to follow him, what he says. But how do you know what he is telling you, what is he answering you, it is right from the Quran and Sunnah? How do you know that? that that's a major part, people do, do not understand that. Because what happens, if anybody has a local imam, or local sheikh, or local mufti or whatever, if they answer you, do not follow blindly. So the best thing to get your answer is to get the opinions from, from four or five different scholars. Like if you ask me a question, right, it says in Sahih Muslim, the hadith number is 24. I don't know if you, some of you heard the name of Ibn Sarin. Who, who, who knows the name of Ibn Sarin? He was the best scholar for dream interpreter. But anyway, he said that he said something very beautiful. He said, if you have a, uh, if you're learning a deen, in order to learn a deen, or if you want the answer about your problems, the person you are learning the deen from, or you're trying to get an opinion about your problems, from the person you're getting your opinion, first you have to understand who is that person is. Where is he getting his education from? Where is he linked? Like for an example, I have a brother here who belongs to somewhere in his grandfather, his grandfather was connected somewhere, was not even linked back to the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not even linked. So someone locally go, uh, go to him and ask him the question. He will just answer him, you're gonna follow him blindly. That's how the people are getting misguided. Anybody has a question? Um, I don't know if this is time for this question. Come here, come here, come here, ask um, me a question. But, um, oh, then you have to speak, uh, speak up. Um, okay, uh, well this is kind of, off topic. Uh, it's a question regarding the beard. Um, what are the specifications or requirements for Muslim, according to hadith, if you can, can, can quote hadith, regarding to growing the beard, length of the beard, cutting the beard, dyeing the beard, all the aspects of the beard. You know, I haven't been blessed to grow one yet. May Allah <laughs> You're talking about the beard? Yes. Okay. Based on hadith. Inshallah. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, that the, I frequently get an email from the people all over the world for like fatwas and opinions and all that. So I'm going to do that later on, okay? Inshallah. Inshallah. Because I do have to complete all that so you can understand what is halal and what is haram because uh, you're going to benefit with all of these questions actually. Inshallah. Because I get these all emails. It's a frequent question people ask all the time. And any other question about the kida? Any other question about the fundamentals of Islam and anything, you don't understand something from the basic, like a shirk, kufr, and the bid'ah, because I'm going to be talking about a bid'ah, because the bid'ah is something like the worst disease. Mm. That's like a hidden stab of a shaitan, hidden stab. Mm. People even don't know that they keep continue doing that. So I'm gonna talk about that. That's basically what- I don't hear you. Yeah. <coughs> What you're speaking about is basically what I've been seeing since I've been practicing Islam is people into the language without being into the spirit 
of uh, representing the dean. Like you were saying, a lot of people get shaitan come <coughs> in, but split. My point, uh, my point to come here was to make sure, because the, what I'm teaching you, what I'm telling you, this is a pure. Yeah. This is a pure. Because a la ilaha, there is no ilaha, he's 100%. Because you probably have seen a people who are even saying a la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but still they are relying on some other things. Yeah. Like they have a maybe a, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, they wear on the neck, they wear something here. Yeah. Some of them wear uh, rings. Yeah. They rely on different things. Yeah. So that, uh, that, that faith is not pure. So we have to totally rely on the column actually, la ilaha, that, that's what it means. We fully 100% believe on Allah and there is no God except one God. And uh, we believe, we promise to Allah that we will follow the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now in the second part, I'm going to uh, talk about more about that. Okay. Anybody has a question about shirk, kufr or the bid'ah? Yeah. Anything, you wanna come here and say something a few words, anyone? What you're saying is that if we follow our shaykh and, and you want to come here? Connecting it with what Prophet Muhammad. Come here. That, that's why I don't want you to eat the food, man. That's the reason I ask you not to eat the food. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm eating food. Don't bother. You got diabetic. They gotta eat. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> All right. What's the question? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Wa alaikum. I don't even know the name of your calling to this line. Rahman al Rahim. What I'm basically what I was saying yeah, was love. that was, was that um, if a person is believing or practicing uh, uh, this according to uh, uh, a shake from a particular school and they not looking at the other school of thought or the like example that's, that's what where, that's like false worship like what school like Shafi or or uh, 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 Saeed Muslim, uh, you know, any Saeed one of those Muslim particular methods, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> you know, they, uh, is that proper Islam or is it proper, like you said, to uh, the st the, the, uh, look at the whole picture? Okay, I'm going to explain something. Muhammad was like it was there are, Muhammad. you probably know that, as you mentioned about the Jafriya, yeah. right? There's not only Jaffrey. I'm sure many of you know that, especially his uh, this brother is from Pakistan. He probably knows like how many sects we have in Pakistan. Okay. Lot of them. Lot, lot of, of them. Okay. Lot yeah. of them. Like a division. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. following their own scholar. Right. Yeah. You know that, right? Okay. They have the elders. They start following that. Yeah. That's not. But that's not they are not on the right path. That's right. Because when you label here something, right? Yeah. You're telling yourself you belong to here. And if I say I do not belong to no one except la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, yeah. that means I'm following the proper teachings. But if I say, okay, wait, I am following, uh, this scholar was passed away like several, like a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and we started some new teachings, and I'm following that teaching was very perfect, mm -hmm. you're away. Now let me give you an, uh, an ayah in the Quran. There's a beautiful ayah. Let's say in the Surah Allah Imran, in the one, take a seat, brother. And let's say in uh, chapter 3, in a verse number 103, it says, wa That's what it keeps saying. Allah is, Allah is repeated that like three times in the Quran. And also it says in uh, Surah Al Imran, Al Inam, and the verse number is 153. And that's a beautiful verse. I like it. It says, Awaz Billahi Minash Shaitan Ajim, Sumla Rahman Rahim, Wa Anna Hada Sirat Mustakima, Fattabehu, Wala Tatabu Subul, Fatafarraku Bikum Ansabili. Now there's a hadith in uh, Muslim Ahmad by, by the Sahaba named Jabir. And he explained the hadith was very, very important. Like for an example, how many of you drive? Who drives a car? You drive, right? Do you drive? Yeah. You drive. You're going on a highway. When you're going on a highway, right, you're going to your destination. Let's say you started your destination and your destination is Jannah. You keep going on a highway. That highway is Quran and Sahih Hadith. Please note this. Quran and Sahih Hadith. And there's also like fabricated Hadith and there's also Modu Hadith and like a lot of classifications in Hadith. But you need to stick with that Sahih Hadith. If some scholars you tell you to follow this, just say, just make sure this is a Sahih Hadith. It's not something else. 
And if you're going on a highway, you probably have seen like uh, there's a lot of exits. Exit, right? They're going to the towns and they are going to some big cities and somewhere. And according to Hadith, and the pro let me explain you about the Hadith, what the Hadith says. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting in the ground in uh, sand or something. So he was holding a stick. He drew a straight line on the ground. He said, this is Asrat Mustaqim, which is taking you straight to Jannah. Stick here. Do not go right and do not go left. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he make a cross line. So there is one straight line and he make a cross lines. Then he said, this is a straight way, and there's a way it's going left and the right, left and right. The Prophet said, stay there. Do not move. Do not make an exit. Do not make an exit. He said, on each exit, the shaitan is standing there, calling you, come here. I'm going to teach you Islam. Mm. I'm going to teach you Islam. Now, do you think the shaitan is going to be there with the thorns or something? He will come in the form of what? Who to tell? Who's going to tell me that? A person. Or, or a sign. A He's sign. going to come in the form of human being. A human being, perfect. It could be anyone. And if you go in the Pakistan, right? The biggest fitna in the countries like Pakistan is the only country in the world, which has the biggest fitna of Islam. With there's so many sects in Pakistan, everyone they following their own scholar. That's what the Prophet ﷺ means. So let's say what are the shaitan looks like. Each of them will say, okay, I am this group, I am this group, and I am this group, and I'm gonna this group, and if you follow me, I'm gonna teach you something about Islam, which is gonna come make you closer to Allah. Now let me give an example. Let, let's go back in the history of Adam al -Islam. What did Iblis told Adam. He said the reason Allah is not telling you to eat the food, so you're going to be among the angels. So he misguided him. But he forgot the first commandment. The first commandment was, do not go there. So the first one was from Allah. The second one was from Shaitan. And that's from how did he attack? And like our human beings. We have two ways to shaitan attacks us. The biggest shaitan is over here. We, have, we call it like a devil whispers. Now it will be really hard for any person to identify either what you, he's whispering to you in your mind. How are you gonna identify he is right or he's wrong? Now that's very tough. That's very tough. It's not for a common Muslim to understand if he's wrong or right unless he has a uh, very too much taqwa, and he has too much knowledge about Islam. And that's the only person who's gonna survive, uh, very lightly, but still, if you read in a, uh, well, let me continue with the hadith first. So, the, so on all these exits, you will find the shaitan there. Scholar A, scholar B, scholar C, scholar C. You, you probably have seen that, they're the bigger scholars, and they have a big beards, and they have big turbans, like all of them different faces. What are these people doing? There's like thousands of people following one person. You probably have seen a lot of videos on a YouTube, like people are kissing their hands and they're going on their feet and doing this. So they are, all of them are misguided. So this is how shaitan deceive people, misguide them. Okay. Similarly, we have to stick what we are doing. If some scholar come to you, let me teach you, then you come with me and we're gonna spend few days and this and that. If you ask me what I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you something new. I'm teaching you what Quran and Sayyidis teach you. That's what I'm teaching you. I don't have any other book except the Quran. If somebody doesn't have a Quran in his hand, he's teaching you something else, forget it. He's misguiding and he's misguiding other people also. Do not follow him. Do not even do that. You can pick up some good things he's teaching you, just pick up that and leave the other things. But do not follow him what he's teaching you. But usually, your own nafs, you know nafs, right? Yeah. Your own inside constraints will mislead you also. Like you're a sinner person, come and go with him, and you're gonna be very pious and this and that. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. Just do the way you're living your life. You have to live a life according to the sunnah. 
That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. You don't need to do an extra. There's a lot of uh, people who <coughs> do an extra ibadah. Like let's say, uh, I get a question, like somebody said that uh, they have a problem in their life and some sheikh told them to do this, some special cure like for these days mm -hmm. and this thing and recite this for these days and do this cure. This is all bid'ah stuff. This is nothing was taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Not the biggest problem that we have. People have a problem, they start looking a cure. Mm -hmm. They start looking, okay, how are we gonna get rid of this problem? Mm -hmm. Now they go to the bookstore, try to find the book where they can find a cure. But you don't need to do any cure unless it is uh, instructed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You're gonna find a lot of information on a YouTube and on a Google. A lot of Maulanas and Sheikhs and Imams, they're gonna instruct you, okay, you have uh, this problem in your life, Recite this for this many days, and you're gonna have a cure, inshallah. Don't do it, because this is not something was taught by the Prophet ﷺ. If you read like a chapter 33, Surah Azab, in a verse number 71 and 72, it says, um, Ya illazin amalakum wa yaghfillakum zunubakum wa mayyut illaha wa rasulahu faqad faza faza nazima. The person who's gonna success, can we digress back to what you were saying about the four righteous imams? What is it? Uh, the four righteous imams. Yeah, four righteous stated, yeah. The or four righteous yeah. imams yeah. stated yeah. that if they said anything that contradict Kahan, <coughs> disregard what they say. Yeah. Also, Allah says in the Quran that the right way is distinct from error. So you should know that. Also in the Quran. Uh, Allah announced that there will be 72 sects and what these sects are about when you break them down from the Arabic and the hermeneutical understanding of the Arabic is that there are 72 different interpretations. This was the madness that he was talking about in Pakistan. So you have like to that's what I'm trying to give an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I'm trying to give an example about the four Imams. This is an exact example of what's going on right now. Like, let's say, if you ask me a question, can I drink a water in a glass? Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, yes, yes, you can do that. It's permissible, it's nothing wrong, because it's not contradicting the commandments of Allah. It's halal, you can do that. Okay, can I drink a water in a bottle? I say, yeah, you can do that. So, f I will say the four things are permissible. But not your generation, but the next generation. They came. And they will say, okay, my father used to drink in a bottle water. I'm gonna just stick with the bottle. I'm gonna stick with that. The four imams was just an optional. You have the right to either follow, but you don't need to restrict yourself to four of them only. Thank you. You do not have to restrict to about yourself. Brother Mohsen, can you come here? Uh, get a sister's yeah. question, get a pen, and mm -hmm. write her to like whatever the questions she has, okay? She can write the questions, okay? I don't know, somebody has a pen, please? Can I give us a pen? Why can't you speak? Let us, no, sister's speaking, Amar. Okay. All right? Was it? Sisters speak in our mouths. They can address the speaker. We don't have the thing where they gotta write down something. Yeah, she they can, can speak. No, no, what I'm saying, if she has a question, so she can put it here, that's what she I'm can saying. speak, she's a human being, let us oh. speak. Yeah, but in terms of uh, treating women fairly, we let women speak. Of course, of course. Right? No, because we are recording a lecture, so we don't want yeah. to, uh, to black her, come in the front. Would you prefer to uh, write it down or speak? <laughs> because you're recording, it's okay. I'm not, you don't need to. Okay, then give it a minute. Um, just just take question. it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't hear, because she's too far away. No, because she's too far away, I don't hear her. So that's why, I mean, okay. take this, please. Mohsen, because she's, she's too far away. Okay, I'm gonna continue with that, please. Okay, let's try not to interrupt that because this is a big recording and I don't want to be interrupted. Now I have to cut this part in a uh, beginning. You know, I have to make an editing. The word unusual in conversation, I have to cut that to, to make it like a proper professional video because we don't like the public talking in the middle and all that. But if you have a question, please do ask me, come over here because you're sitting far away, I don't hear you. Okay, so you got my, you got my point. 
we do not have to restrict. Let's say four imams told you something is permissible. Now, I would say, okay, this is also permissible to drink a water in your hand. That's permissible because this is halal, right? So that means we do not have to restrict ourselves to the four imams. That's not our reasoning. That's only option. What the later generations, like in India, Pakistan, and the Bangladesh, these three countries, they, some of them has uh, more than 90% restricted themselves. They, they say, no, I, I'm totally hunky. And I had a conversation with a couple of imams. And uh, they were the scholars, mashallah, good scholars, better than me, inshallah. So I told them, uh, what do you follow? He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm 100% Hanfi. He said, I'm 100% Hanfi. He said, what do, what do I follow? I said, Alhamdulillah, I ha I'm 100% Muhammadi. <laughs> I follow Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you know the hadith of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said on, on the Day of Judgment, whoever you are following, right, on the Day of Judgment, you are going to be standing on the Day of Judgment with that scholar. Like, it, let's say if you limit yourself, okay, my way of life is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're gonna be standing with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Qiyamah. But if you say, okay, no, I have restricted myself to this Sheikh and this Imam and this Mufti and this P or this blah, blah, people who are very elders, they have some lot of blessings. So you, you are totally misguided. You have any question? No. Suppose you just follow the Quran because Muhammad is no longer here. So in order for you to keep on, you follow his teaching from the Quran. You follow the Quran because Muhammad is no longer alive. So it's okay. No. The Quran is the According to the Quran. Yeah, but you no, know, Surah 9, verse 9. Did you know it? Did you know Surah 9, verse 9? Calvary. Well, the Quran says follow the messenger. What he says, you obey as well. If you know Surah 9, you will understand what I'm saying. If you don't Wait, know Surah 9, you're the first nine. Okay, in order to... Yeah, you don't know. Explain yeah, it. Right. Okay, in order, to, in order to make sure we are on the right path, we have to follow first of the Quran. And what does the Quran say? Okay. As I just repeated before, in Surah Ahzab, verse number 71 and 72, it says, Ya ayyallazina, Ya ayyallazina amanu, all you people who believe, fear Allah. Make sure you be, when you talk, you be very truthful. Do not lie. You have to be very straightforward. And then your deeds will become straight. If you be very truthful, if you are sincere in your heart for Allah, your deeds your bad deeds even change into good deeds if you correct yourself. And then in the next part, it says, And those who follow and obey the, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who follow the footsteps and the lifestyle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that means we have to follow and we have to adopt our lifestyle according to the Prophet Sallallahu in order for us to be a very good Muslim. And if somebody asks you who you are, what do you follow, I say, I follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's it. I do not follow. You have option. You can go to Masjid of Abu Hanifa and like you can go to Hanfi Masjid and you can go to Shafi Masjid and you go to Hamli Masjid. That's optional. It's, it's acceptable. But if you go to somewhere in a Masjid where they have a totally different prayer, you cannot do that because that's even contradicting the Quran because that's not it, that's not the Quran says yeah can you um, in Arabic I was trying to tell the brother that in the respectfully in the Quran it tells us to obey the Prophet so there is no obeying the Quran without looking at hadith you can't be a only Quran Muslim because if you're only Quran right that's you know right that the Quran says obey the Prophet <coughs> And numerous surahs. Surah no, four. Just wrote down surah nine. You just that's what exactly Quran says. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that's what the Quran says. We cannot rely on. We cannot rely on the Quran. I understand. But there's no Quran without. But there's no following the Quran without following Sahih Hadith. There's a lot of people. Yeah. But what happened to you? You make stuff. an extreme statement. You didn't hear what he said. And what he's saying is that the Quran 
is the first, of uh, the, the first, of and the sunnah is reinforcing what of the course. Quran is saying. That's the methodology. But if you equate the sunnah with the Quran, then no, you're no, in no, error. No, bro. no, no, no. Oh. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you can't, just like I can't equate both of them equally, they I not. can't say that. They're not equal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just like I can't no, do that, right. you know, is the same way I can't just say, oh, I'm following the Quran. It's the same, same, to the same extent. I can't say it's equal, it's the same extent. I can't say, oh, I'm just following the Quran. That's, that's not right. Either. You same can't same follow thing. the You can't Quran. really. Uh, like, can't so in English, people the say, is, the is I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. You can't really say that in Arabic. Arabic has no capital letters. Arabic is all small letters. <laughs> so if you're saying that you're Muslim, that means that you're fasting, you're, ch you're giving up charity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're doing right to your br brothers and sisters and whatnot. Uh, when you say Muslim, it is better translated in English as you saying you're Muslim. <coughs> that you got to do the practice of what Allah said in the Quran in order for someone else to say, oh, he's a good Muslim. Yeah. You know, he gives charity, he yeah. comes to Jumra, yeah. he listens to the people in authority, so forth and so yeah. on. This understanding that we have in English doesn't work for a lot of us, and it confuses us when we hear someone talking directly from the Quran. Yeah. Because we have to understand the language of the Quran yeah. and how it's presented. It's we not, uh, we cannot understand the Quran without yeah. the Hadith. We need that because the hadith is the supporting on each verse in the Quran. Right. You wouldn't even know how to pray if it wasn't for the hadith. You wouldn't know how to pray. The prayer is in the hadith. Yeah, yeah. it's in the hadith. So it wouldn't be able to be a fundamental five pillars of Islam Muslim. We wouldn't be able to be Muslim because we wouldn't, the descriptions of prayer, the Pashahood, the mm -hmm. Mufu, that's in hadith. Right. We wouldn't be a Muslim mm -hmm. if five times, praying five, five times a day is being a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be Muslim for the hadith. Right. We, we okay, let me continue, please. We wasn't following right. Prophet Muhammad so to allow exactly, us to ask him exactly. out. We wouldn't because be that's the example. example. And, right. and the exactly. way of Prophet Muhammad. That's all I was trying to express. But that's what he said. That. That's why he was yeah. saying you're not listening. That's what he said. Now, the most important thing is, please, let me continue. You got it. You got it. Okay. There is something very important you need to know. When you try to get your, when you try to get your answer, when you try to get your answer from a Google, Please do not trust Google. Because a lot of people are trying to get, okay, I have a question about Islam, let me go to Google. Okay, do not do that. Because there's a lot of non-Muslims right. who are being making websites, they're changing our words and they're changing everything. Do not rely that until you're faced with a real scholar to verify the information. I get so many emails, they send me hadith. Mm -hmm. They send me a lot of things in the email. My Emails are being bombarded with emails and emails from everywhere. People asking to verify the information. When they go to local imam, they hear something else. But when, when they try to, because it's all about trust. When they go to some scholar who belongs to some sect, they don't trust them. When they ask me, what do I believe? I say that, okay, I believe on Muhammad, I mean, the Quran and the Sunnah, and the pure Sunnah of the Prophet Okay, now, now this is what you have to understand, brother, please. A lot of people don't believe in that. Now, brother, let me let me try to give you like a very important information. So, so do not rely on the sources of Google. They are not 100% correct. Right. They are all like fabricated and corrupted materials. Even a lot of non-Muslims, they're trying to put the corrupt Quran, with the changing everything in the Quran, and they are even making a website of Quran so people can read it. First of all, you need to verify the website is correct by the Muslim. You have to verify that. Because you might be reading something which is not even a Quran, they might be changing, they might have some some parts of the Quran, and they will add few words in there, astaghfirullah, you like, a, you are disrespecting the Quran, because you, you don't need to verify, because the sin goes to you. <laughs> you don't even want to verify who this website belongs to. They might say, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, starting from the top. I went through, uh, because just a few days before, I received an email with a list of long, list of like non-Islam, uh, non-Muslim who made the website. They were located in Europe, Germany, in Russia, and uh, some Israel. Mm -hmm. They made from them because I know how to get, uh, how to trace these websites to understand who are being behind that. When I got, I said, these are not even Muslims. Who are these people? So they're trying to run their business and they're trying to drive the traffic. So they're making money on that. So you need to have a, 
education about the classifications of ahadith. This is something a common Muslim does not understand that. They don't understand because if somebody says this is the Prophet Sallallahu said, maybe a common Muslim say, okay, I'm going to start doing this. You're going to be start doing this because if you have a knowledge, you're going to go verify if this, the, this scholar is telling you to, uh, this, to follow this hadith. This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is your duty to verify. I'm not asking you to sit there to believe me what I'm telling you. I'm asking what I'm telling you, you go verify. What I'm saying here, I'm only saying you from the Quran and Sahih this. That, that's it. That's what Makita is. I'm pure teachings. I don't know if I, I don't know follow anything else. Okay, now let me come to the questions that I frequently receive from the internet that I'm going to share with you. Brother, you hear me? Now, who's going to answer me? What is the date of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who's going to say that? Who's going to answer that? Anyone? What is the date of the birth? What is the date of birth? Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is very shame. Yeah, Muslim, you should know that. You know our. You know our first responsibility is to know our Deen. This is our first responsibility. I'm just asking you, the date of birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who's going to answer that? They don't answer, give them the birth. Yeah. They don't birth. I'm simply asking a simple question which is related to your faith. Right. That's even a basic thing. Forget about the salah, forget about the complicated things, and I'm asking you the very basic thing about your prophet. Yeah. What is the date of birth? Who's going to answer that? Um, I know he came in. He came in, he was 40 when he came into the knowledge of Islam. You never heard about that? How is that? This, this is the fun, this is the simplest thing I ask you about your faith. Okay, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, controversies going on in the date of birth of the Prophet Many in Eastern countries like India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, majority of the people from these countries, they believe the Prophet ﷺ was born on the day of 12, 12th Rabia level. Many people believe that the Prophet ﷺ, but the Muslim, you know that? Okay. Majority in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, countries like that, majority believe that the Prophet ﷺ was born on the 12th day of Rabia Lawal, mm -hmm. which, is not, which is not correct. Mm -hmm. This was an estimated date. And according to the scholars back in old times, they tried to get the official date, trying to do the mathematics and all that, and according to them, many of came up with a number eight, number nine, nine. number 12, Number 13, <coughs> but uh, but according to the hadith in hadith Bahaki is an old version actually, it's mentioned in there that uh, he was born in 12. So many people believe that the 12th Rabia level was the date of birth of the Prophet Sallallahu So make sure you know that nobody knows exact date. It could be the 9th, it could be the 10th or the 12th. So we, nobody knows the exact date. This was just like an estimated date. Mm -hmm. But this was like just an estimated date was a mathematics by the old scholars. Yeah. Okay. The next question. How many of you know on Milad? Ooh. Milad. Like the celebrating the Prophet Sallallahu birth. Ever heard of that? Do you know majority of the countries celebrate that? You know that. Yeah. You know that. It's called Malad al Nabi. What's your thing? Malad al Nabi. What? Malad al Nabi. Nabi. Milad. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the data. Uh, people in many countries in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Can you hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In these countries, they celebrate the birth date that our Prophet Sallallahu came in this world, we're going to celebrate the whole month. And some of them, they celebrate on the 12th, and majority, they celebrate the whole month. Mm -hmm. 
They do a lot of stupid things, singing and dancing, doing a lot of things. This is the major disease in our religion, major disease. Because there is no difference if you, if you celebrate the Milad of the Prophet Sallallahu there is no difference between the Christmas yeah. and the celebrating for the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no difference. Mm -hmm. We do not find this information in the Quran. First of all, we don't know the date of birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is clear. Mm -hmm. If somebody says that, okay, no, I can guarantee you 100% he was born in 12th of Rabi Alawal. Don't even trust that. Ask him simple question. Show me the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. Remember this word, Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. Show me from the Sahih Hadith and I will accept it. They will never be able to produce that because I have been all across the thousands of Hadith I couldn't find it myself. So this that it doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is the people who celebrate the, the, the birth of the Prophet they don't know. Uh, How many of you know the word Bid'a? Mm -hmm. You know the Bid'a? You know the word Bid'a, right? Tell me, what do you know about Bidah? Bidah, in my understanding, is anything you give yourself to other than Allah. Anything what? I don't hear you. Anything. You want to come here? Yeah. Come here, come here. Come on, say everything in the camera. Yeah. Make sure people know this guy here who said that. <laughs> so not people will blame me. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. All right. Alhamdulillah, even if you're trying to do this in Rahim. To, as a Muslim, I've been taught that. that Who taught Bidah, you that? Imam W. D. Muhammad. Okay. Uh, I was taught that that bidda is anything that you put in okay. other in the religion, other than the religion as it's revealed. Okay. And a lot of people, like you said, the birthday that doesn't exist in in Islam. So when we try, so to people are still it doing out, it. When we tried to figure it out, nobody remembered it because that's not a part of what we've been taught. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you've been Muslim, probably born Muslim. <coughs> and I was, I was converted to Islam uh, 44 years ago. And most of us, we converted. So as long as we've been studying Islam, and we think we got a little authority in, our, in Islam too, but reality is, when we look back, we couldn't find it in ourselves. So that's why nobody said he's born this day or that day because we don't we never taught was taught that he was when he was born. Okay. So thank you. So bitter is anything you give yourself to other Yes, than you're right. Time. But I'm let me give you like more explanation then, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Your question? Yeah, you're sitting too far away, like maybe ten miles away from me. <laughs> you wanna come close? The word Bidda, it comes from, I learned it this way, Bidda from the Lala, what the Lala not. Every Bidda, every, every innovation is going astray. So when you do things outside of the Quran and Sunnah Rasulullah, it can move you away, further away from Islam, and then you find yourself outside of Islam. Okay, now let, let me give you an explanation now. Okay, yeah. All bidders are not bad. They are also good bidders. For instance, uh, when the Muslims first started having congregational prayer, they called the Adhan one time. Then as the Muslims spread out further and further in, in Makkah, Umar, who was a caliph at that time, stated that we will call the Adhan, right, and the Ikama. Now that was a bitter because it changed something in religion, but that was a good bitter. So you have to be careful with that word because usually we contextualize it <coughs> as a bad thing. Okay, let me explain that. Please, please let me talk. Uh, the it Prophet Sallallahu used to say in almost every Jummah Khutbah, he used to say, Shar al-Amura madasatuha. Inna kullu bidatin dalala, kullu dalalati finnar. Like every misguidance will lead you to hellfire. Now, how did you get misled? Okay, let me give an example of a bid'ah. I put a bottle here. My son 
will come and he will put it here. Now his son will come and he will put water here. You get my point? It started from here actually. This was the original. Let's let's stick let, let's stick to the original. If we make a one little editing, our next generation will make another editing, and the third generation they will make another editing. I don't know if you the story of uh, uh, Noah alayhi salam. There were like uh, uh, five people passed away, and how Shaitan came to them. He came into the bald head, and he was uh, one eye blind or something like that, and he came in the face of beggar to one of the person. He told them, your elders passed away. Now it's a shaitan, but came in a human form. Now how did he mislead them? He said, listen, your elders are passed away. Don't you think you have some kind of uh, remembrance of the person who passed away? Now that's devil whisper. And there's another shaitan there. The shaitan is in the face of human beings who is telling you, advising you, this is something good, do it. And now if you're a weak person inside, if you're weak inside, you're gonna say, okay, that, that's a very good idea. My father passed away and I might have some like a good something for his remembrance. What he started with? Just a little painting. Mm -hmm. Because what shaitan do, he does not target the current generation. He usually targets on the next generation. Because he knows that if he's making a small little painting, right? If he's making a little painting, mm -hmm. the next generation will might fill up, put up some colors in there. And the third generation will come, will make a statue of that. And the next generation came, they made a whole statue start worshiping. It started so many generations back. Mm -hmm. And after so many generations ahead, the whole thing is changed. So what was the first commandment? Do not make an image. And the probably of uh, who are convert, they know the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. It says in uh, uh, chapter uh, 3, verse number 10 something, it says, those shall have no other gods yeah. beside me. Mm -hmm. Those shall make no other images. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, right? Very good. Very good. And I, the Lord, and the jealous God. So this was the basic commandment. Do not take your first step. If you take a first step, the shaitan will lead you to the next step. It's natural. So that's what Allah says. Stick understand. with yourself with the Quran. Do not change it. Mm -hmm. Can you check like uh, how much is the battery level in there? Battery level. Uh, okay, it's okay. 36%. Hmm? 36. 36? Okay. Let me go to the next question. Uh, reciting Fatiha and reciting Quran that someone who passed away. What do you think about that? Somebody who has Ever have you seen that? Usually in, our, usually in our countries, usually in our countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, when somebody passed away, they recite Surah Fatiha. And they also do a recitation, they gather like a lot of people in a gathering and they recite a Quran mm -hmm. to, to send the blessing to one who's died. Yeah, so anybody heard of, heard of that? Yeah, he knows that, he's from Pakistan. You know that, right? They do that. You ever heard of that? Okay. According to the Prophet Sallallahu there's a only three things uh, which will be left when somebody passed away. Mm -hmm. It is uh, your knowledge that you might taught someone and your knowledge is going to continue. The second thing is your children who is pious and they're making a continuous dua until they are alive. That's the second thing. And the number third thing, you build something for the poor people. Like for an example, uh, like a food depot or something. They're gonna continue receive the food from there. Mm -hmm. As long as the, they're getting a food, you're gonna get a reward for that. So these are the only three things which is gonna help somebody pass away. Other than that, it's nothing except it. That's called bid'ah. That's also part of bid'ah. Because these are the list of questions that I usually frequently receive from my people. People are doing it un mm -hmm. without knowing or without knowledge, and they continue doing that. They don't know if it's like a bid'ah, it's a correct or not. They keep continuing that because the imam told them, they continue doing that. They continue doing that. Yeah, they're gonna put the food, they're gonna pass. 
Okay. How many of you heard of? Okay. Another question. How many of you heard of uh, the Prophet? Some some says the Prophet has a knowledge of unseen, and some of them says he does not have a knowledge of unseen. Ever heard of that question before? Like the Ilmi Ghaib. Unseen. unseen, and some of this he doesn't have a knowledge, and some say yes, he has a knowledge of unseen. Water. Ever heard of that? If he received the water, or, or revelation that he called like Ilmi Ghaib. From Jibreel, then he had knowledge of the unseen, but in normal circumstances he did. He received revelation through Jibreel. Okay, many people uh, say that uh, he has a knowledge of unseen. Like for an example, who has the knowledge of unseen? When I, when I say unseen, right? Yeah. That means if I ask you, when is the day of Qiyamah? Anyone knows that? Yeah. No one knows that, right? No, no, no one knows that except yeah. one God, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I ask you, what's behind you? Can you answer that? According to some people, according to some people, they say that according to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he can say what is behind him, what's behind him. You understand my point? Mm -hmm. According to many people, they think that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the knowledge of unseen that if someone is standing behind him or behind you, he can say what's behind you. That's a shirk. Because this is something contradicting your pure aqidah, because according to the pure aqidah, only Allah knows unseen. Because uh, if you read in uh, chapter 6, verse number 103, Allah says, La wahwa yudriku No eye can see him, but he is the one who can see everything. everything. He can see everything, but none eye can see him. And it also it says in Surah Baqarah, verse number 186, like the Allah is asking, uh, telling the Prophet Sallallahu if my people, my servants will ask you where is Allah and tell them I'm near to you. Even I'm near juggler, I'm near to your juggler vein. It says in chapter 50, verse number 16, And the same thing mentioned in Surah Waqiyah, verse number 85, I am very near to you, but my eyes cannot see you. Your question? Yeah, uh, he had a question that he was asking me about Surah 9, verse 9. I'd like him to ask you now because uh, we got interrupted with the young man's question. I don't hear you. No, he had a question. Verse 9, I 9, verse I 9, verse 9. I 9? Surah 9. Surah 9. Surah 9? Surah 9. Surah 9. Mm -hmm. And what's the verse number? Kaaba. You asking me? Mm -hmm. No, it's a chapter six, Surah Al Inam, and verse number one hundred three. Surah Al Inam. No, Kaaba. Verse nine and Kaaba. Kaaba. The one that starts off without Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. I don't. I'm asking you about that verse. Can you repeat the verse then? Because maybe they didn't recall it. You're not Hafiz, huh? <laughs> okay, just tell them. You know. Okay, it's, uh, you're looking up, right? It says, uh, is it the Quran? Surah 9, right? Surah number 9? Mm -hmm. Or the power number 9? Surah Taba? Yeah. Right, Taba. That's what he said, Taba. Okay. So before we were explaining the young man here, he interrupted, so. Everybody didn't understand. You oh, you're talking about there's no Bismillah? Right. No, he was saying, what's the, where's the ayat? You're asking me a question, there's no Bismillah, the uh, bra, that's the one? Yes. Surah bra, right? Kaaba, there's no Bismillah, that's your question. Kaaba doesn't have the Bismillah. Right, it doesn't have Bismillah. Because what happened, they, they thought it was part of the preceding verse, so yeah. they don't know really, but uh, in hops, they separated it they and separated, made it on yeah. its own. Right? No, okay, there's no Bismillah, because if you can understand, 
every surah has an introduction. Every surah has an introduction, right? Mm -hmm. If you can go, it's a tanzilul minullahi al azil al kim, right? So many surahs are like that. Alif Lam, Mim, Zarikal, Kitab, Allah, Ibaf, Kahaf, Yansin, right? Mm -hmm. All of the Alif Lam, Mura, and different said, then gives a little introduction, what is this about, and Allah keeps continuing with that. Yeah, okay. And with this, with Surah Bra, and we also call it Surah Tawbah. It, because it specifically talks about the war. And that's a straight uh, to the point, according to the scholars, to the straight to the point, the pr it, it was instructed to the Prophet Sallallahu it was uh, instructed to the Mashurkeen that you have four months to negotiate or you have to leave. So this doesn't need a Bismillah in there because this was like a simply straight up uh, started with that because it was not like a simply introduction. You understand my point? Mm -hmm. Because according to many scholars, it doesn't have a Bismillah because uh, it was straight instruction from Allah for the Mashurkeen. So when we are warning, we, we do not say that, okay, uh, I'm going to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, I'm going to shoot you right now. I don't say that, right? <laughs> my brother, you getting my point? I hope so. Is that a, is that a Meccan surah or a Medina surah? Oh, number nine and number nine? Yeah. And what's the question? The signs of Allah have they sold for a miserable price you know and have they So you're trying to understand what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for an example, this uh, they are talking about that the people who love the luxury life. So that means you selling your eternal life just for something temporary. Those people have sold their eternal life. You understand what I said? Okay, it says the signs of Allah have they sold for a miserable price. Means they are so cheap, they are so greedy, they just, they want, they see something, that's what they think this is the real life. But they don't understand, there's a life which is not going to end. So that means, l let's say for an example, for an example, let me give a very good example. If I say across the street, I have a masjid standing for you, but you need to, across the street, you will say, no, 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 I cannot do that. I cannot do that. Now you, your, your car is Tiora, but you don't want to walk there because you say, no, 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 I like this car. That's far away. You understand? So that what is, that's what it means. That these people, what you see, luxury life, like let's say we see the buildings in Manhattan, people get very greedy with that. Ma, uh, may, may Allah give me this, and maybe if I can be rich like them, so if the shaitan makes you forget about the eternal, as a Muslim, we surrender ourselves for the sake of Allah. We submit our will. Like many people ask, like, what do you mean by submitting your will? That means we sacrifice ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like let's say, we, 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 everybody likes to do something, right? We like to have a big cars. We like to have a big houses. Don't tell me you don't like it. Everyone likes it, right? Everyone likes it. But for the sake of Allah, we say, no, no, no. We are more greedy. Mm -hmm for the Akhirah. Like if you read in a chapter 67 and a verse number uh, 1, 2, and 3, it says, yeah. Yeah. Rahim. Tabarak allazi al mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. Allazi khalaq al mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah has given it. Allah give them a test, they give them, Allah give them more. Allah testing us because he give us less. Now he's testing, not believe me, on the day of judgment, they are more accountable who are rich than like us. Because we are going to be going into the Jannah, inshallah, before them. Because Allah said there's a strong trial for those people who Allah gave them everything, and they are, Allah is testing them in dunya what they are doing with their money and everything. And with our, with, we're living in a poverty, let's say we have a less food, we have a less sources, and everything, Allah is testing our patience. If we're going to get excited, or we're going to get hyper, we're going to cry, we're going to scream, or we're going to be patient, I say, Alhamdulillah. Do you know what is the biggest name Allah gave us? Who can guess? The biggest what? What is the biggest name? What is the biggest blessing for a human being? Who can, who can guess that? Patience. What else? What else? Huh? 
Patience. Come on, you don't know what Allah bless you with something. What is the number one? I'm asking number one. What is the biggest blessing? Blessing. Believe in Allah and patience. If you have patience, you can earn more. Okay. No. What is the biggest blessing Allah gave you? The blessing of Allah. Allah gave us His mercy. Who else? No. Life. Life. Okay. Life. Tell me if I'm wrong. The biggest blessing for a human being is your eyes. No, not true, not true. Yes, this is the biggest blessing. I'm asking a question. Wait, wait. Not your legs, not your eyes, not your eyes. No, no, wait. You don't need your eyesight to see. You see without your eyes. No, wait. Wait. Go ahead. Close your eyes. What you can see? I see you. Nothing. Nothing. No. You see nothing but a black. No, you can see. Put your hand, close your eyes. Put your hand closer. Put your eyes like that, and you will see every time your eyes, your hand touch the point. But you don't understanding my point. You cannot do anything. You cannot do anything. You can. You don't even know what the colors look like. You don't know know the difference between the color and black and white. But they have people that's blind. They see anything, but they can write music. And they know okay, okay, let me, let me try to continue what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to tell you to continue. Let me try to com continue. Listen, let me try to continue what I'm trying to tell you. For a, in the matter of, in the matter of a health, the biggest, now I'm supposed to be asking a question, what is the best blessing in the matter of health? Okay, because even we don't have our eyes, we still can hear and we can still have a heart. We can still smell, but I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be asking, what is the biggest blessing in the matters of a physical? That's a eyes. Because if you do not even have a eyes, right? Can if okay, if you close your eyes, can you tell me how the black and white and the color looks like? You're nothing. You're being look. You you're in the dark. So for a human being, this is the biggest blessing of the eyes. You can see that. No, 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 no. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your like heart goes a, like this. Uh, bump, bump, yeah, bump, bump. Sound, In between sound. those two bumps, the other one is the hereafter. Because yeah. if you don't come on, you're dead. Yeah. So the, the biggest heart. blessing that Allah gave was the roof, the spirit to keep the, the heart sound. growing. Brother, I ask you one simple thing in a matters of a physical in a health. That the is your eye. What was the biggest gift the eyes, from the Allah? No, I didn't ask you eyes. what's a gift. Gift. I didn't I'm say what is a gift. The eyes don't function yeah. without the heart. The heart is primary. <sighs> okay, let's say. We're past our time. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> okay, let me continue with other questions. Um, oh, you can finish your thought. There's no problem. Okay, how can be Muslims be united? How can they be unified? How be united? How can be united? It'll take a miracle. That's a simple answer. That's a simple answer. <laughs> uh, stop. As stop. We all follow the same, uh, yeah. the same belief and the same path. So okay. Just come commit to Allah. Come together. Allah. Yeah, but we all got to be on the same path. The problem that the Muslims are not united, it's only because everybody looks on the others' mistakes. Yeah, we keep right. noticing yeah, others, okay, this guy, this has a mistake. And this is what the Quran and the Hadith teaches. So look at your own character. L look at here. How good I am. What's going to happen to me on the day of judgment? Rather than I'm looking at this guy, oh, he's wearing a cap, he's not wearing a good dress, he doesn't know how to talk. Why should I should be worrying about but myself. This is, only this is not, this is only a shield. So the, the clothes doesn't make people. Because what happened? Because you don't understand. Okay, you don't understand something. This cause of because. Okay, this cause of fitna in the society. That's called the backbiting. That's called the fitna. Let's say, according to the Hadith Prophet Sallallahu said, even he has a bad habits, right? Don't go to him and tell him he has a bad habit. If you want to correct him, you talk to him in personally, but do not tell him in the public, or do not go to the third person, or yeah. this guy lie. But you remember you saw with the prophet, and he used to walk by every morning, he used to walk by the same same path every morning. And this old lady used to throw garbage on him. You know that story? Mm -hmm. That's our hadith. It's our hadith, so when, when, when one day he came by, and the lady, she didn't throw nothing on him, and he was wondering why nothing happened. 
So he went up to see why nothing happened, why she didn't didn't show, didn't throw nothing on it. You know, Ben. And after that, she became Muslim. You know, when Prophet he was Salam. surprised, why you came to see me? All I did to you, and really you bad, came to see me. Yeah. When the Prophet Sallallahu used to see a problem or any mistake in um, in his any sahaba, he used to go in a sermon. He used to talk generally, not directing to a one person. Like if you want to correct him, talk to him personally, brother. This is not right. This doesn't do good. Yeah. So, but let me continue. Okay. Now, what is jihad? Jihad or not? What is jihad? What is jihad? Okay, according to the media, they have really corrupted this word a jihad. I'm sure everybody knows that on TV, media, and they are trying to use this word. Trying to create hatred, but basically it simply means trying. It basically simply means you try. What is the best jihad for a human being? Who can say that? So what is the biggest jihad for a human being? For a Muslim, you say. Number one. Is to accept responsibility for your action. Number one. Number first. That's the first one. What's the first jihad? Who's going to answer that? Okay, the first, the first jihad and the number one jihad is, is called jihad bin nafs. Your own self. Your own self. Let's say if you're smoking, right? You need to fight your own self to stop smoking. People are so weak. They're doing five times prayer. They're doing everything, but they do not have the power to fight themselves to stop, stop the smoking. And a lot of people are having a way of using a rough language, cursing, they have no power inside to, to be very strong to stop themselves. Okay. Okay, I think uh, it's too late and I have a lot of list of questions. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.